This is what juvenile prison in America usually looks like. Thousands of kids in orange jumpsuits, locked behind bars under constant guard. But here, in America's heartland, it could not look or sound more different. I'm telling you, bitches hey. get on my nerves. I hate them. Welcome to juvenile prison, Missouri style. You guys, shut the up! Meet Ty, age 17. I remember being three years old and my dad putting beer in my sippy cup. Her first arrest, age nine. Rachel is 15. I would get high and I just wouldn't care anymore. I just ran away. I didn't know how to face it. Rachel stole nearly a quarter of a million dollars in cash and jewelry from a neighbor, then fled in a stolen car. I was going to go to um, Minnesota. Just because? Yeah, just to uh, leave and start over, but I thought I could do it by myself and running away with the law chasing me. She made it all the way to Illinois before being caught. A judge sentenced her to the Rosa Park Center, one of Missouri's 32 juvenile jails. But it doesn't look like a traditional prison. Set on a college campus, it's part of a radical and controversial model that could just change the way America looks at juvenile crime. There are 100,000 kids in the juvenile justice system right now. The question is, can they be saved? Well, here in Missouri, they're doing things to help kids that you won't find anywhere else. Have they found an answer? Come see for yourself. For the past year, Primetime has been deep inside the system, living with the kids. You shut up. I have a big white one in the blue box. Wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. <laughs> throw it at the camera. <laughs> Ty is here for committing multiple felonies. She has been in and out of detention centers and foster homes since the age of two. It was over 20 placements I was in and kept doing the same things, actively using in drugs and alcohol and fighting and assault on foster parents. As part of her treatment, Ty recounts her drug history. At the age of seven was the first time I ever smoked pot. And then when I was nine, my dad died, and I progressed into sneaking my mother's prescription pills. When I was in fourth grade, because we didn't have like hardly any foods in the house, I would, I would sell the pills. At the age of 10, that was the first time I had ever shot up meth, ever smoked meth, or did cocaine. This is my mother and daughter workshop. She's working through her biggest hurdle, a volatile relationship with her mother. I felt really abandoned by her. She just like gave up. I just have this hatred towards my mom. And I think that's a lot of what just holds me back. My past is all I have. Until I can not hold on to the past anymore is when I can start being happy. What makes this place different than the other places that you've been to? This place gets to the issue, gets to the core problems. With other placements, they, you know, they just want to cut off the weed, but it's going to grow back eventually. Here, you get down to the root and they try to pull them out. You can't kill it unless everything's gone. It's shocking to see no guards, no lockdowns, but the fact is there are very few escapes. If I was in a lockdown facility, I would want to run. Here at Rosa Parks, it becomes your family. You're not going to want to betray them. It doesn't come out of you have to do this. You're going to want to. But can this tough love work for the toughest cases, the boys? They've been in gangs and committed crimes like rape, assault, attempted murder. There is a common theme, absent parents. Meet Chris, raised by his father and grandmother. His mother left when he was just 11 months old. She's been in and out of prison ever since. I was doing drugs. I was drinking every day, every day, seven days a week. Chris may look like the kid next door, but listen closely. I was uh, also stealing cars. In my town, I was labeled the troublemaker. I was always the badass around town. Nobody wanted to mess with me. 
Chris is at the Waverly Youth Center on the other side of Missouri. This is a last chance stop for 44 boys already embarked on a life of crime. The boys are divided into teams of 12. The entire day is scheduled. Now on the outside, many of these kids drop out of school or underperform, but here they must go to school five days a week and many graduate along the way, learning valuable life lessons. Discipline, learning how to follow rules and live, is different than punishment, right? Like in here, discipline's a routine. Basically everything in here is run off of a cycle from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. If you can do it in here, then you can do it out there. That has nothing to do with the fact that you told me to shut up. In other juvenile jails, disagreements are often settled with violence. Here, they are forced to talk it out. Kelly, can I check in real quick? It's called checking in. I'm just irritated, reminiscing. Checking in is just right here, right now. Tell us how you're feeling, what you're going through. Kim O'Rear has been the group's leader for five years. It can be two words, I'm happy and I'm excited, or it can be, you know, a 30 minute talk about I'm homesick and. And I sort of need my space right now. When you check in, there's probably 11 other kids in the room that are gonna tell you they've been there and they feel what you're feeling. Chris has been at Waverly for six months and is having a hard time getting with the program. Uh, she wasn't home and I didn't feel like uh, calling well, home and talking to my dad. Right but the staff and team members keep prodding. If something's going on, let us know. I understand you're upset. You didn't get a phone call. What makes this place different? The fact that staff are here to help you and to push you to do right. You're taking it out on us. And that's not okay. It's not like a prison or jail or nothing like that. You feel like you're a wanted here. Chris has spent most of his young life running from his problems or holding them inside. But now Kim zeroes in. How many in here have something that they're scared to talk about? In this darkened room, the boys feel safe, bearing their souls and secrets. Tonight, I invite anybody who needs to, to share and open up about um, some of the more shameful issues that you might be holding on to. Chris raises his hand. He is about to take a step that will change him forever.